안녕하십니까? 이재원 치과 손영입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. s o n y o u n g i of Eagle Dental Clinic. Today, I want to share with you a case in online surgery lecture. In number 13, there was crown root fracture requiring immediate implant placement. If you look at the intraoral image pre-op, the patient received the crown before, and the crown was fractured. You can see that there is highly contoured the labial bone. The thing to note here is that we should not assume that the labial bone will be fully contoured to the apical portion. There can be very steep angle. This is panoramic image pre-op. There is a fracture in number 13. In CT, the root projection angle is very vertical. The common error we make here is that if we place the implant in the direction of the root, there can be fenestration defect towards the apex side. There is high possibility of that. In the case of canine, when you do immediate implant placement, we need to be very careful about implant placement angle. We need to place the implant more palatally. We need to adjust the angle so that it is more labial. The implant should be placed in this way. Looking at distance, I think it would be okay to use about 10 millimeter implant. If you use an implant that is longer, when we do actual implant placement in the apical portion, there is high possibility of fenestration occurring. I think it would not be wise to use extra long implants. In the case of this patient, one guide would be used to place the implant in accurate direction. The preference is not to open flap and to place the implant immediately after extraction. As for the gap, and soft tissue area dual zone graft to be used. That was the plan. Let's look at the surgical clip.
Did you enjoy the video? Now let's review the surgical process and look at the results. The first extraction was done. Atraumatic extraction is favorable, so periotome was used for extraction. This was after extraction. Guide was adapted. You look at the fit of the slot to determine the fit of the guide. Following conventional one-guide process, implant was placed. Initial drilling should be done following guide hole. This is most important. I've used one-guide path drill twice. In the case of this patient, there's 7mm and 13mm path drill. I used 7mm drill first, and then I've used the 13mm drill up to the marking point, which means that drilling was done up to 10mm. You need to form initial drilling hole first, and then following that, drilling should be performed. The reason being, in the case of upper anterior, after extraction, we need to drill on the inclined surface of palatal slope. In order to prevent a drill deviation, we need to use a path drill. This can be of especially helpful in avoiding drill deviation. That was how implant was placed. If you look at the slot on both sides and buccal and occlusal view, the implant was placed accurately. You can see that there's significant buccal gap after implant placement. AOS collagen was used for bone graft. The reason why AOS collagen was used was because if you take a look at dual zone concept mentioned by Salama, there's a bone zone and a tissue zone. If you use a bone graft material not only in bone zone but also in tissue zone more so than augmentation, it helps in preventing collapse of tissues. So this is what is called a dual zone graft concept. When you do a dual zone graft, if you put in a healing abutment first, because of the diameter of the healing abutment, 
then there can be difficulties in putting in graph material because it has a wide diameter. In my case, with the implanted driver on, I put in the bone graph material. When I use AOS collagen, the collagen graph material itself has self-aggregation properties, so we can prevent scattering of graph material. When you do dual-zone graft, I think it has many advantages in using collagen graft material. This was after removal of implant driver, as you can see. Up to the gingival area, graft was done. You can have two options now. You can connect healing abutment or provide immediate provisional restoration. In principle, it is better to provide provisional restoration, however, the patient did not really want that. Therefore, healing abutment was connected. We can end like this, but in order to prevent scattering of graph material in the coronal part, sling suture was done once. Additional incision was not used. If you look at the results in panoramic image, implant was placed nicely and vertical position is very appropriate. When you look at standard image, the implant position looks appropriate. KS3 4.0 by 10 mm implant was used. In the case of upper anterior, your choice of implant diameters is quite limited. If you use a KS implant with such deep connection, then stability between the implant and abutment increases, therefore there is less possibility of screw loosening. Even with smaller diameter, it can withstand stronger occlusal forces or guidances, so I think it's a great choice. In my case, I normally use deep connection implants in lower anterior or upper anterior. In areas where you cannot really use wider diameter implants, I use this. This is CT image, this is pre-op and post-op. Without fenestration defect, the implant is nicely maintained. The graft material is nicely maintained up to the coronal part of the socket. I hope you enjoy the surgical clip. Even in my case, when placing single implant in upper anterior, it can be quite difficult. In that case, if you place implant freehand, unintended errors can occur. Therefore, by using one guide or other guides, you can get better results. Rather than opening flap, when there's no dehiscence defect or fenestration defect, as shown, without opening flap, you can utilize dual zone graft concept. I think this could be a great choice. This is the end of my surgery. I'll come back with an even better case. Thank you for watching.